I want to read a story here about the Good Samaritan. And before I read this story, I want to highlight that there are six characters in this story. Six characters. And I often ask the question, who am I in this story? Who am I in this story? There's the Jewish man. There's the bandit. There's the priest. There's the temple assistant. There's the despised Samaritan. And then there is the innkeeper. And when I read this story and other passages and parables in the Bible, I ask myself these four questions that is an invitation. And if you're taking notes, you can write these four questions down. Is how is God being revealed in this passage? What is my invitation? How will I obey him? And how and who will I share this story with and what I'm learning? Luke chapter 10, verse 30, it says this. And Jesus replied with the story, a Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho. And he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him and left him half dead beside the road. By chance, a priest came along, but when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. A temple assistant walked over and looked at him lying there, but he also passed on the other side. Then a despised Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil, wine, and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you next time I'm here. Now, which of the three would you say was his neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits, Jesus asked. The man replied, the one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, yes, now go and do the same. I've been thinking about this story. The other day I was in a grocery store. And while in this grocery store, I saw a gentleman that was dressed as a man and, and in my heart, if I can be very honest and transparent, I began to judge him. But then the words of myself rang in my ears. If you don't have compassion for individuals, you'll have no authority to speak into their life. If you don't have compassion for individuals, you'll have no authority to speak into their life. So my judgment turned into compassion in that moment. I realized the Holy Spirit was speaking to me that all of a sudden I was completely aware that this man was so valuable in the midst of his confusion about his identity. I was completely aware by the power of the Holy Spirit that he had a story. And I approached him, and I, I just began to share with him how, how Jesus loved him. I noticed something when I was interacting with him, that his mascara had been running. The very mascara that he had worn had been running, knowing that he had been crying somehow prior to our conversation. But he was not aware of his tears that were showing up on his face because of the mascara that had been running. 
And I think about individuals that are in situations like this individual. And I think that maybe possibly in the society that we're living in right now, maybe, just maybe, some of the individuals that the priest would walk away from and the assistance the Levites would walk away from are the very people that Jesus is saying, I have compassion for them. I wonder if God is speaking to our generation, to the church. Instead of having rocks in your hands, put oil in your hands. And pour that oil over their mind. Pour that oil over them to bring them literally out of darkness into its marvelous light. There's one thing that the Lord has taught me over the years is to be honest. In this story, I've seen myself as the Pharisee. I've seen myself as the priest that at times have not had the time because of judgment. I've seen myself as the temple assistant that is so busy to be able to assist things that forgets to slow down to recognize what's around me. 